So I'm in a jail now. Uh, mind you, I hadn't ate yet. I still couldn't eat the food. It smelled horrible. I remember I had, trying to like drink a milk and it was in a bag, which I'd never seen before. <clears throat> and it tasted like straight vomit. I couldn't, I couldn't stomach it. So I had opted on just not eating. And that was my plan. But in my mind, I was going to be able to get... Com I heard dudes talking about commissary, and I was like, as soon as I get to the block, I'll be able to get commissary. That's not how that went. I still had to wait a couple of weeks till my money was able to get on the books and do all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. So I'm trying to get used to the food in jail. I'm in a max pod. Um, I now have a cell partner. Now, the minute I'm in there, I'm in there with other so-called dudes is going hard or whatever. They looking at me like they trying to check me. I'm not from VA where I'm locked up at, right? They know that, and it's not looking good for me. It's not looking good for me. My, and on top of that, not to, for TMI, I couldn't use the restroom um, just because I could I was now in a situation where if I had to, I had to do it in front of somebody and my body just would not relax to do that. I'm sorry I had to break that down, but I need y'all to know what jail and prison is. Um, it was a sad situation, man. Jail, it, it, it's jail. It's a cell. Um, you don't get to go outside or wreck yard like that, at least where I was at. It was a piece of concrete brick that you could look up and see the, the sky, but that's it. It had one basketball hoop, and it was a terror dome out there. We played handball occasionally. Um, me, what I learned quickly while I was in jail is that I knew how to communicate with people. And my intelligence level was decent. So I kind of just paid attention to my environment. And I don't want to say use it to my advantage like I was manipulating anything, but... I knew how to move because I was paying attention. That was it. I knew how to interact with certain people. I didn't just try to act the same way with everybody because I could see, all right, he's running this car or, man, this dude, I don't know, he might Kirk out. <clears throat> this dude got control of the jobs or influence. You know what I'm saying? So I was learning about politics. I was learning how to deal with people. But the whole time I was fighting my case, man. I was fighting multiple life sentences. And I remember as a 19-year-old kid, I'm trying to act tough. I'm trying to act hard. I'm trying to act like it's not bothering me. But let me tell you something, man. Every chance I got to talk about my case to one of these old heads that had been in the system or been in front of a judge, I was trying to seek some comfort by bringing them my charges in hopes that they would tell me I'd be all right. And every time I told them I was in there for six robberies, they just they was like, bro, you're not going home. You're probably not going home. Like, they, they didn't have no cut cars. They was pointing out other dudes that was in the block. There was a guy named Philly. He was 16 years old. He brought a pizza man with his buddy. He ended up getting a life sentence. I had six. I was like, man, here we go. Um, The thing that killed me the most about jail was the wait, waiting to go to my court date to get sentenced. That is what killed me. It wasn't the fights because somebody asked in the comments, like, was there a bunch of fight? Yes. Jails, there's more fights in jail than there is in prison because there's more respect in prison than there is in jail. People know in jail there's less consequences. It's more than likely just your hands. In prison, it's going to be a little bit more. Um, but I could deal with all that stuff. I was able to get a decent job. I was serving trades, so me and my people was able to eat good. I had kind of got a bunch of guys that click up with me. Um, I was doing all right until I started getting thrown in the hole for fighting and all that. But <clears throat> it was just that weight. It was that paranoia. It was like, here we go again. At first, I was waiting to finally get locked up. Now I was waiting to go to my court date. It, just, it was too much. And I wanted to be over. And I started to lash out because I couldn't leave the jail. But I started getting trouble in different blocks just so I could go to the hole and kind of like get rest and reset and, you know, I don't know. We just in my own way escape as much as possible, but I couldn't go anywhere. Um, and it was a lot of that. It was a lot of time in the hole. My first stint in the hole, it was over three months straight. Um, I learned to play chess behind the wall with while another person 
across the, the wall or across the way in another cell in the hole was a call out moves, vice versa. Um, I learned how to fish under the door to retrieve newspapers or noodles. Um, you know, I had kind of got tight with one of the guards, so she would bring me commissary down there. I found ways to survive in jail. And I shouldn't have been finding ways to survive in jail, but that's what we do as humans. And I was learning quick, just like I was learning in the streets. Um, and all of this was the combination for something bad for when I did go to prison, because now I'm learning how to get my way. I'm able to get tobacco, certain things that other guys couldn't get. You know, I'm able to get on the phone. Um, I'm going to a visit here and there. Like different things are happening and it's making me forget for a moment how serious jail is, if that makes sense. Um, and then, you know, I'm waiting. I'm supposed to go to my court date. I remember I had like two months before I was supposed to go to my court date. I'm in my cell. It's 4.30 in the morning. I hear a knock on it and the guard comes. He's like, man, you got court. I said, no, I don't. I said, my court date's two months from now for sentencing. He said, Mr. Williams, you got moved up. I said, are you serious, bro? He said, yeah, come on, let's go. And when you go to court in jail, let me tell you something. It's the most miserable experience because you know you're on the way to see the Grim Reaper, man. Dude in the black robe, somebody that could literally um, unalive you while you're still alive, turn you into a living ghost. It's not a game. There are people making decisions about people's lives that aren't in the best of moods when they wake up in the morning, going through their own stuff. And now I'm on my way to the courthouse. It's five in the morning, it's still dark. They give you a brown paper bag breakfast with an apple, a cheese sandwich, a milk, some carrot sticks. You're trying to eat it. You're shackled on your waist and your ankles. You're trying to eat like this. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> by the time I by this time I got used to the food, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. It was about survival. That milk started to taste good. Um and finally get to the courthouse. Get in there. I'm in the bullpen in the courthouse, and here comes my public pretender. I mean public defender. But we know it's public pretender. Which I'm convinced to this day used to come to the jail drunk, man. I don't know. But I swear I used to smell liquor on him. His tie used to be loose. He looked disheveled. And he was a public defender, man. And I look at this guy. By the way, don't, if you get a lawyer. Pay, a, pay for a lawyer. Don't get no public defender. When he comes to the bullpen to talk to me, he's like, yeah, my fault. Your court date got moved up. They should have told you. You need to make sure you tell me I'm going for sentencing two months sooner than later. Um... And then he, in the same sentence, he looks, he said, yeah, I can get you 34 to 54 years to do. That's okay. <clears throat> he said it just like that. And that's the problem. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing to try to convince kids not to go to prison, man. He looked at me. He was like, yo, I can get you 34 to 54 years to do. Is that okay? First time offender, never been in trouble before. This time I'm a vet <clears throat> and I never got out the car. And I told him, nah, that's okay. Nah, I'm not doing that. Straight up. 